Blame it on the motorbike. That's right. That heap of red metal is why I'm here. Not just stone dead, but disfigured by fire first. If only my brother Harshad hadn't brought home that brand new motorbike. Bought it on credit the minute, minute he was hired as a second level programmer at the Jaipur Computer Center. It was going to take him nearly 10 years to cover the installments. And what with the interest end up costing him practically as much as a house. But he wouldn't listen to reason. And why should he have? Considering he had no other expenses, still eating and sleeping at home with us. Or with them, them rather. Since a year ago, I found myself a husband. Well, really, my parents found him. There were three of us three sisters, and supporting us cost a bundle, not to mention having to put aside a dowry for each. You can imagine how desperate my parents were. And what, with India's economy growing in leaps and bounds, everyone's caught consumer fever, so prospective in-laws and husbands won't settle anymore for a handful of fake jewelry and a few yards of fabric for sari. They expect a lot more. Now to even consider taking you as their bride. Everyone's got so greedy. You also have to get them a radio, a television and a fan. Or better yet, an AC system blowing out cool air on those steamy days before monsoon season. But like I said, it was just my bad luck that on the night set for the arrangement, the family of my bedroom came to our house and saw my brother's bike. They set their sights on it and that was that. So to close the deal and get rid of at least one of us daughters, my parents threw in the bike as well. How could they have known that as soon as he found out that crazy, that crazy brother of mine would just take off fast as a lightning bolt and take his beloved bike with him. A month after the wedding, still no bike. So the pressure was mounting. My in-laws were breathing down my neck. When is he coming back? When are we getting that bike? It belongs to us, you know? We'll report him to the police for theft. My husband was on edge and his family treated me like an animal, made me sleep on the kitchen floor and kicked me whenever they crossed the room. I hadn't lived up to their expectations, so now I was worth nothing to them. A dowry is no jo joke in my country. For many men, it's the main reason for getting married besides getting someone to slay for you in the house, of course. Just think, every four hours, an Indian bride is killed by her in-laws for not delivering the dowry as agreed. That makes over 8,000 young women murdered every year. But the authorities obligingly file the cases away as household accidents. Odd, though. How those brides are always found burned to death by the kitchen stove. Blame it on faulty appliances. 8,000 clumsy brides a year accidentally soaking themselves in kerosene and going up in smoke. Or maybe it's their husbands absent-mindedly drawing the still-lit match in the wrong direction. And all of a sudden, look what happened. After that, the widower is all set for a new marriage arrangement. Hopefully a more profitable one. Maybe not just a motorbike this time, but a brand new helmet too. And a leather jacket like those really cool ones in Bollywood movies. An old Indian saying goes, the death of a wife brings another dowry for her husband. The death of a water buffalo 
brings the economic downfall of the whole family. In my next life, I'd rather come back as a water buffalo.